Hey guys, welcome back to week 24 of the MIT challenge, which is to learn MIT's four-year computer science curriculum in 12 months without taking any classes or even being enrolled at MIT. So I'm happy to announce that the challenge officially passed the halfway point early this week. So I finished 17 out of the 33 total classes and I'm a little bit under six months. So I finished a little over half in a little under half of the time. So I have a little over six months to do the remaining 15 classes of the challenge. And that includes I also passed with a 69% the signals and systems exam that I had previously failed that I mentioned in the last video. So I'm moving on. I'm working on classes 18, 19, and 20, which include uh, computation structures. So computation structures is the class that which really bridges computer science and electrical engineering. So normally if you study one of these topics, they're mostly separate. So electrical engineering is physics, it's voltages, it's currents, it's dealing with circuits, and computer science is information, it's algorithms, it's math. So they're often very separate, but computation structures is really how do you build a computer out of circuits. So it goes over how to build registers, how to build a basic operating system, assembly language, and it goes through all of these components. So it's a very interesting class because it really merges these two disciplines. So that's one of the reasons I'm excited to take it. The other reason is that it has very scant resources to learn from. So most of the MIT classes I've been doing, I haven't had difficulty learning the material because there's so much content there. So for most, a lot of the classes, they have full lecture videos. You can watch all the lectures of everything that they discuss in the course. Um, some of the classes don't have those, but you can get a textbook and they have all these assigned readings and lecture notes so you can kind of compare with what would be happening in the class. This class doesn't have those. It doesn't have videos, doesn't have textbook, doesn't even have a set of course notes. All it has is the lecture slides. So this is the slides that would be on the PowerPoint that the presenter is preparing. And also a very short document which was compiled by a TA which explains some of the concepts. So it's going to be a challenge because there isn't that much content in the actual course. So if I want to learn, I know what they're talking about, but I'm not necessarily going to learn all the concepts deeply just from that material. I might have to go onto the internet and use other resources in order to learn. So I'm excited for this class too because it's not only a very interesting class, but also a very unique challenge because it's a more difficult class to take because it has so few resources. And finally, I'm going to be doing not only the uh, the final exams for this class but I'm also going to be doing the programming assignments. So these are in-depth programming assignments that involve designing the simulations to build registers and a basic CPU and a basic operating system and so there's going to be very in-depth tutorials to test my knowledge of the concepts as well as exams to test the concepts so in addition to being a difficult class because of the scant resources I do have a lot of material to evaluate myself on to see whether I've actually learned the material so that's one of the reasons it's going to be challenging and I'm going to be working on those projects next week. I'm also doing principles of microeconomics and logic one. So economics, because there's a HASS requirement for MIT, you have to take a certain amount of humanities classes. And I'm excited because although I study business, which isn't exactly the same as economics, uh, I did take microeconomics in, in my home university. And it'll be interesting to compare how much I learned from that class, which was a class that I went to lectures all the time, that I had to take final exams that I paid tuition for, versus what I'm doing with this open courseware. So I feel there's a direct comparison between those two versions of microeconomics, because one of them was a formal university and one of them is this self-education approach. And so I'll be enjoying commenting on that maybe when I'm done uh, principles of microeconomics. And logic will also be interesting because uh, not just because as a computer scientist you need to think logically, you have to think rationally about problems, but also logic and particularly formal logic notation is very important in natural language processing for artificial intelligence. So there's a lot of research involved in how do you break down English sentences and understand them, understand the meaning of those sentences in artificial intelligence. And logic systems often are the basis for how we do that. So. I didn't know that before I started artificial intelligence, but now that I see that connection with artificial intelligence, I'm excited to study maybe what some people would find very dry notation for formally manipulating logic because I can see the connection with artificial intelligence and maybe building a computer that can understand pieces of human language. So that's very exciting to me. So next week, I'm going to be working on the projects to do computation structures, building the very basic 
components of a computer, uh, so the electrical engineering computer science mix, and I'm going to be working on that, and I'll update you guys next week with my progress working on those classes and see whether I can overcome the challenge of not having that much material for the course. So thanks, and I'll see you next week.